this is what government needs to know about teaching AI in schools. I'm here to talk about AI. So AI is ubiquitous, it's everywhere, it's completely inescapable. So I figured it was a good idea to give a talk about what we should know about it when we teach it. AI is a really messy topic. So it's like, it's so messy you would not believe it. It's way messier than anyone would ever anticipate and it's just getting messier by the day. There are no clear paths and there are no clear definitions. I don't have all the answers. This talk is more speculative and encouraging further discussion than it is in relation to anything else. Uh, I am not an oracle on this topic and I'm just trying to foster discussion here because I think it's useful. I don't necessarily have any answers. Not yet, but we're working on that. I'm hoping more education adjacent people, scientists, researchers, people in industry, people who speak at conferences, talk more about this stuff so we can figure it out better and we have more talks like this. Who am I? Before we look into this, let's just touch on that. Hi, I'm Paris. I am primarily a game developer, but I'm also an educator, a researcher, a history geek, and an author. I do a little bit of everything. I do lots and lots of different things all around the world, normally, and all over the place in terms of my interests. Lately, my focus has been on AI and how it intersects with all the other things that I'm interested in. So while I have a strong computer science background, I'm not from an AI background. It's something I've developed an interest in in the last five years or so. My day job is at a game development studio, Secret Lab, but I also help run one of, I also helped run one of the largest open data hackathons with using government data, GovHack, in Australia and New Zealand, and I've written nearly 30 books on a variety of topics. I'm speaking to you today from beautiful Hobart, Tasmania, in Australia, which looks like this. You should visit when that's a thing that people can do again. Anyway, so the topic today is this. The material here comes from two reports, which I had nothing to do with as well as a large-scale survey and a bunch of interviews and another report about Australian school teachers, which I did work on. So we're talking about what government needs to know about teaching AI in schools. Although the title is possibly more accurately, Stuff We Have to Talk About So the Future of AI is Good, which didn't really flow as well, so I didn't make it the title of the talk. We'll start with AI. Since it's talk about AI, it's probably good to decide what AI actually means. This is a talk about AI and education. So here is a quote from the Australian Government Department of Education's report into AI. This is not anything particularly groundbreaking in my opinion. This is what they think AI is as far as schools. It's early and it's important. Pretty straightforward. But what actually is AI? What do we mean when we say AI? There's a lot of different arguments about what this could mean. You probably already know this. It means artificial intelligence. Everyone here, pretty clever egg, clever bunch. We know what that means. However, AI is a term to use to describe all sorts of things. It's often used to describe a machine or a computer program that features a human-like thinking process in order to understand or work through a task. AI can be embodied in some robots or disembodied, like it's infused into some sort of application like a search engine or some sort of facial recognition system. But AI is a thing that kind of works sort of maybe a little bit like a human in some way. Right now, most of the AI that exists in the world is narrow AI, which means it does a single specific task really well. E.g. it does facial recognition technology or it helps you crop an image really well when you post it on Twitter, or at least tries to. So what's the deal with education and artificial intelligence? More specifically, what's the deal with school level education and artificial intelligence? The talk today is about school level stuff. So in Australia that's K-12, I imagine most countries use the same terminology these days. K-12, school level education. AI in school education is still in the really early stages of development. Educators are still working in a place where they need to develop foundational knowledge about and with AI in order to empower students to, to thrive and exist in a world where AI is a thing. It's really early. It's really, really early. This whole learning about and with AI thing is actually super hard. It's incredibly difficult. We way, way, way underpay our teachers and expect them to do all sorts of crazy stuff relating to AI. Learning about and with AI will require teachers to understand the economic and social changes that technology will bring, as well as the potential educational uses, as well as ethical considerations. It's a whole minefield of stuff we're expecting teachers to do. Teachers, seriously hooked on, seriously clever bunch. They are adapting, they will adapt. They can adapt, this is not a big problem. And it's not saying teachers are bad, it just means there's a lot of stuff to do. It's a huge amount of work. There is a lot to do particularly around ethical, legal, and governance frameworks to ensure that AI technology is used for good and that transparency processes are in place to ensure that accountability, uh, classroom, school, community, and so on levels is, is a thing that's happening. It's a whole lot of work. So 
there's kind of two pillars when we think about AI and education. These are two pillars that are so obvious that most people kind of figure them out on their own, but you know, it's helpful to have them spelled out in a report. So the two pillars are how AI can improve education and help us address challenges, and how we educate people about AI. So the first one is basically how we use AI to improve the classroom. And the second one is how we teach people and explain AI to people in the classroom. The first pillar, it's been done to death by all manner of ed tech, learning tech, learning analytics, conferences, vendors, people, speakers, researchers. It's a big topic, it's a big area, it's a billion dollar industry of people building stuff. The second pillar is actually pretty hard because the people in question, how do we educate people about AI, are actually largely kids. And figuring out how to tell kids about AI, it's, it's tough, it's really tough. This is a great quote from a book called Future Frontiers, Education for an AI World. It's a free book, I'll give you a link to that in a minute. One of the essays in this book postulates that unless AI and education is addressed now, first, early, now, right now, then none of the amazing benefits of a AI world that we love to envisage and talk about in the world of startups and communities around startups will ever happen. Basically, unless we educate our kids properly on how to deal with AI, it will never actually materialize in a way that is good for humanity. This is the book, it's really useful, check it out sometime, there will be a link at the end, so you don't need to worry about this right now. I will also post the links on social media. So, in order to benefit from the potential advantages of AI, from revolutionizing cancer treatment, maybe, to you know, increasing workplace automation and making a productive world where people have to work less, stuff like that, we need to attend to the needs of education as a matter of urgency. It's really important, it's more important than it's ever been. And we have to act quickly. If we want that ideal future, we need to educate people about AI now so they can go through the education systems of the world and build that ideal future. This lovely chart, which is uh, from the Future Frontiers book, shows how the elements of AI and education relate to each other. It's really useful here. I won't go through it step by step, but if you take a photo of it or have a look at it later, it's really, really useful. So, next thing we're going to talk about is AI and curriculum and how those things fit together. If we accept that AI and education is a vital step towards a bright, bright AI future, what do we do? How do we make sure AI and curriculum is a thing that happens and happens successfully? There's three things, three key elements that need to be introduced into the curriculum at different stages of education, from early years through to adult education and beyond, if we want to have people who are adequately prepared to gain the greatest benefit and build the greatest AI. What are those three things? Well, let's take a quick look. First one, everyone needs to understand enough about AI to be able to work with AI systems effectively so that AI and human intelligence can augment each other and we have a really good symbiotic relationship between the two. This basically means people need to know enough about AI to realize when they're dealing with it, understand what they're dealing with, understand its limitations, all that. It unpacks a whole bunch, but really everyone should know enough about AI to adequately exist in a society that has AI in it. Really important. People need to understand that AI is as much about the specification of a particular problem and the careful design of a solution for that problem as it is about the selection of a particular AI method or methods to use as part of the problem solution. This is not taught at all right now. It's kind of taught by some interesting teachers doing interesting things, but it's not systematically taught as part of the curriculum. Two, the second thing. We need to discuss what it should and should not be used for. Everyone needs to be involved in a discussion about what AI should and should not be used for. We should discuss what it should be designed to do, what it should not be designed to do. Some people need to be trained to tackle the ethics of AI in depth and to help decision makers to make appropriate decisions about how AI is going to impact the world. It's important. It's really important. If we ignore the need, this need in education, then we risk failing to empower people to make useful decisions about what it could and should not do, and people will make decisions that are wrong or bad or will lead to a future where AI does not do what it should do. And society will not benefit from it, or society will be negatively impacted by AI. The third and final thing, some people also need to know enough about AI to build the next generation of systems. Not everyone needs to know enough about AI to build AI. This is not a all kids need to learn programming thing. This is a some, a subset of the community will need to build these systems, hypothetically and we should make sure that they are equipped with the baseline knowledge to move in that direction through their education. This is not everyone, it's not necessary to teach everyone this, it's important that enough people do understand how they work at a systems level in order to be able to build them. So, in addition to AI specific skills, 
knowledge and understanding, things like that, that need to be integrated into education in schools and colleges, universities, and even workplaces. There are several other important skills that will be of value in an AI world. These are skills for AI more than their skills that are specific to AI. These skills are often referred to by various names. Sometimes they're called 21st century skills, which is a bit of a silly term. They will enable individuals to be like effective lifelong learners and problem solvers and collaborators and solve problems and do all sorts of stuff like that. Sometimes they're called STEAM skills, lots of names. Uh, names are not really important here. So the thing is, these are skills that are adjacent to lots of things, but are not often taught alongside those things. This is where we get into the real, you know, word salad. Some of the big ones are metacognition and self-efficacy. These are, you know, things that educators love to talk about all the time. They are interlinked and they're essential for lifelong learning and stuff like that. We risk failing to sufficiently recognize the importance of these concepts because we're only measuring subject knowledge. So we, we teach subjects, we don't teach the way people learn and work with those subjects. And that's really important. But one of the biggest ones for AI, and one of the ones that's often missed out on, and schools think they do a good job of this and they often don't, that's a bit tricky, is collaborative problem solving. Collaborative problem solving brings together thinking about the separate topics of collaboration and problem solving, each with their own research history. And to be frank, the way we teach this all around the world, particularly in Australia, to kids is not going great. Collaborative problem solving is a really key skill for the world. It's for a key skill for education, for researchers, for workplaces, for humans who want to do interesting things. And its importance is just going to keep growing and growing as more automation takes effect in society in small and big ways. There is a mismatch between the evidence in favour of collaborative problem solving and learning uh, in literature and the approaches that are used in schools. It's a bit weird. We, we might actually be currently failing. We might not be teaching students properly, which sucks. It's terrible. There's an interview I really like that's quoted in the Future Frontiers book, again, which I'll link later, from Davos in 2016 in a debate which involved the future of education and some high school students. And a high school student from Hong Kong stated that the current school system produced industrialized, mass-produced exam geniuses who excel at examinations but are easily shattered when they face challenges. And I think industrialized, mass-produced exam geniuses is the last thing we really want to produce as a, a, a human race. It kind of sucks. We need people who can tackle challenges and this often involves working correct, correct, usefully with others to solve problems and being able to think outside the box in ways that were not anticipated by an exam. We don't need exam geniuses. This is the last thing we need. And this is primarily what most school systems teach. And it's kind of the antithesis of what you need to teach to make people comfortable and useful with AI. So this obviously isn't an AI thing right now. We've kind of gone into a rabbit hole of what education should be. And that's a good thing because these two things are strongly interlinked. Collaborative problem solving does not happen spontaneously. Both teachers and students require high level training in order to employ collaborative problem solving effectively. And there is little evidence of any concerted training effort around this pretty much anywhere in the world right now. Again, teachers are, are amazing at their jobs by and large. There's pretty much no evidence that there's poor teachers out there, but good teachers are doing this wrong. So when teachers do attempt to employ collaborative problem solving, the quality of the group interactions and the dialogue and the way they facilitate these interactions is, is poor. So how do you teach it? It's difficult to isolate the precise nature of the factors that impact the effectiveness or not of this, this teaching, but we can, can influence factors that are, are frequently mentioned as influencing success in various bits of research. These factors are often really the usual classroom stuff, the environment in which the collaborative problem solving takes place, the composition, stability and size of the groups in question, things like that, social skills, teachers, social skills, students, social skills, the noise in the classroom. Really, this is the usual classroom stuff, very much the usual classroom stuff. But being effective at collaborative problem solving means being able to do a whole bunch of things from articulating and explaining and clarifying answers and thinking to adjusting those answers and thinking explanations when presented with new evidence and presenting it to other people, being able to explain the thing that you are presenting differently depending on the audience of the person you're presenting it to, resolving conflicts, searching for new information and on and on and iterating through that process. But it's really the same thing as effective understanding and if necessary, working with AI. It's actually really a similar set of processes. The skills to collaboratively problem solve a small group-based problem are the same skills you need to work in an AI-fueled world or even work on AI. So how do we train teachers to teach for this? 
There's big implications for teacher training and professional development. It's a really hard field. This is complicated. And we don't have all the answers. But AI, and of course society as a whole, is too important not to do this properly. The significant educational implications that AI brings to society, both when it is viewed as a tool to enhance learning and teaching, and when it is viewed as the thing that must be inserted into a curriculum, as it is often viewed by government and policy-making bodies, uh, these things make it clear that we must update the way teachers are trained to teach this stuff. Pretty much everyone agrees. But teacher training is really hard. If teachers are meant to prepare younger people for the new world of work and things like that, meant to excite them and enthuse them and get them interested in new topics and new careers and the possibility of building and designing future AI things or future things of any kind, then someone needs to train those teachers and prepare them for the future workplace and its students' needs, the future lifestyles of people, the future potentially partially automated society, a world where their skills are needed in different ways. It's complicated. This is a role for policymakers in collaboration with organisations who govern and manage the different teacher development systems and training programs across countries. If the need for young people to be equipped with knowledge about AI is as urgent as everyone seems to think it is, and most people seem to agree on that, then the need for educators to be usefully equipped to deal with this is critical. It's completely imperative. Lots of people say maybe we should give our teachers data science skills. And that's a good thing. Maybe we should give some of our teachers data science skills, but that's about as useful as saying we should teach programming to all school students. Sure, data science skills will give teachers the ability to understand some of the systems they're working with more clearly and maybe enrich the teaching profession, but it's not the only answer. It's definitely not the best answer. What we want to look at here is a deepening of teacher expertise. It might be at the subject knowledge level, or it could be concerned with developing the requisite skills to support and nurture collaborative problem solving in students. There'll be a lot of other benefits if we do this. If we do give teachers data science skills and learning science skills that enable them to gain, gain greater insights from the increasingly valuable array of information about their students' learning, then they'll be better equipped to understand the impact of understanding data and AI when they talk about that to their students. So the very fact that classrooms are becoming more automated, more analytics driven, and equipping our teachers to understand that will be helpful to them on one level and make them more able to teach their class. We'll also teach them how to explain that stuff to other people. But we really do need this to bring about any sort of useful prosperity. Any failure to recognise and address the urgent and critical teaching and training requirements that are precipitated by this advancement and growth of AI is likely to result in a failure to get the prosperity that should accompany this AI revolution, as the quote I mentioned earlier said. Basically, if we don't do this properly, we're not going to get the massive, amazing, prosperous world that we probably should out of all this AI stuff. It'll just turn into another garbage pile of tech that doesn't make any sense and that we didn't use properly. AI is more than a particular set of technologies. This is how we need to see AI. We need to see AI as just a thing that is used to solve problems, not on a technical level. Unfortunately, most people start explaining AI by going straight to ML, neural networks, big data, deep learning, whatever. AI is not those things. AI is not even slightly those things. Focus on the problem specification and solution design elements of AI if you want your world to be useful. For education to benefit from the amazing potential of AI, we need to focus on this. This is so important, I'm going to make it bigger. Right? The important bits we need to teach are problem solve specification and solution design, not neural networks, deep learning, big data, data analytics, stuff like that. We need to develop a culture that encourages people to unpack educational problems and unpack problems so that solutions benefit from people combining technology with human intelligence happen, not just let's apply a neural net to it and see what happens. We need to start developing a curriculum and pedagogy to ensure that our students develop self-efficacy that will set them apart from their AI peers, as it were, and that this will help them deal effectively with the challenging and perhaps turbulent workplace and world of the future. So yes, this is a bit of a reimagined schooling thing. We need to consider the, the great scope that the development of AI augmented teaching practices provides to reimagine teaching and schooling. This means that educators must make sure their voices are heard by the technology companies that are building technology classrooms of the future and stuff like that. You know, Google's got these classroom features, Apple's got these classroom features. 
we need to make sure teachers, educators, scientists, researchers all have an impact on how these work so they can be integrated usefully. But that's another talk. We need to engage education with everybody. There are social, technical and political challenges that require our attention. Socially, we need to engage teachers, learners, parents and other education stakeholders to work with scientists and policymakers to develop an ethical framework uh, within, each, within which AI can thrive and bring benefit. Basically, this bit comes down to collaboration. It's really important. We need to build international, ideally, collaborations between academic and commercial enterprises because when all this AI stuff is being developed, if we don't collaborate, it just won't be useful. This sounds really obvious, but it, it's just not happening on so many levels that it needs to be said. And we also need to start speaking the language of policy. Policy-wise, political-wise, leaders are very quick to jump on the AI bandwagon and say it brings a lot of benefit. But we need to use language that helps them get to where we want them to be. We can guide them there. And policymakers, governments often work on a language of budgetary constraints, which is a sad but true fact. And, you know, AI can drive forward a lot of transformation uh, within the framework of tightening budgetary constraints. So if we draw attention to that, we can get a little bit more support when we need it. This is what teachers need to know right now and what teachers also know right now. So this comes directly from teachers. Teachers mostly agree that their students' future depends on a lot of AI fluency. It's really important. And that lots of AI instructional resources are available. There's lots of good and bad coming from all directions. Kids are surrounded by AI from everything from Snapchat to Facebook to video games and everything in between. AI has it. Programming is just the beginning. You know, programming is a really good thing to teach in the classroom, but it's not the only way to make people familiar or comfortable with technology. And it's never too early to start. So we need to bring some AI awareness into the classroom as early as we possibly can. Okay, so let's do a bit of a summary. AI has the potential to bring about enormous beneficial change to education, to everything, but very much education. But only we use the human intelligence that we're all equipped with to design good solutions to educating for AI. Importantly, we need to remember that AI is not just one thing. It's not a single isolated discipline. You don't take the neural net and apply it to something else and you have applied the AI. AI is a big domain all of its own. It's not just one discipline. It's lots of different smaller disciplines all rolled into one and you need to consider them all together to make use of AI in a sensible manner. To effectively support teaching of AI at a school level, government needs to acknowledge what AI means as a whole, not in the abstract. So government needs to realize that AI is not a bucket of neural nets, a bucket of deep learning, a bucket of big data. Government needs to acknowledge that AI is an interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary field that involves all sorts of cross collaboration and problem solving from a variety of different directions. AI is made up of different concepts within those fields as well. And teachers and students are not foolish. They're not stupid. They don't need to be told that AI is just a thing that can be taught. You'll never have an AI unit in your classroom, and if you do, it's probably being taught wrong unless you're at a university level. AI cannot be taught isolated from the rest of the world. It's just simply too integrated with everything. As AI and AIs continue to be woven throughout the fabric of everything humans do, it raises profound economic, social, and philosophical, philosophical questions. AI is everywhere, and the more AI there is, the more questions there will be, and the more we'll need to talk about it. So again, what do teachers need to do? How can teachers prepare the wonderful diversity of students that exist in the world for the future of these technologies? How can students and the families of the students and communities they live in be empowered to not just exist, but also exist well, to thrive, to do really well in a world where autonomous and intelligent computer systems will disrupt the way people live and the lifestyles and the economies of the world? It's a bit of a buzzword, but new digital literacy, what does that actually mean? What does it mean to be digitally literate in an era where machines can generate and spread media that is not discernible as fake or real almost instantaneously? The lines between simulation and reality are going to blur and more and more disruptive forms and more potentially damaging forms of human uh, virtuality and associated things will emerge. And students need to be equipped to understand that these exist and also how to deal with them, how to tell that they exist, and how to work within that framework. 
and we're not equipping students to deal with that these days. It's really hard to keep up. How can educators keep up with emerging technical developments and ask important questions about the benefits and the risks and develop a robust dialogue and all that stuff? It's really complicated. They're, they're fighting with learning management systems day by day, let alone answering the fundamental questions of how AI will impact humanity. Policymakers, practitioners, researchers across the globe are trying to figure this out. I and mean, we don't have all the answers yet, but I really hope people start talking about it more because we're kind of at an inflection point because AI is suddenly everywhere. Hardware is caught up so fast that AI has just rocketed to the top. So let's try and wrap this up into as neat a little package as we can given the messiness of the topic. Teaching AI is really tough. It's not just AI you have to teach, it's a whole bunch of stuff. It's ethics and the ethical ramifications of what you're doing and you know the social ramifications of those ethics and beyond and beyond. It's governance, how to encourage and teach people to build good AI and encourage the policy and the frameworks to do that and why that should even exist. It's system design, pure and simple, designing a good system. You need to understand how to structure something in a systematic way for it to be effective, but you also need to understand how systems are put together so they're not just mystery black boxes. It's cooperative problem solving. As I said earlier, most of the facets of trying to solve a problem in a group are useful for the AI world. You ask the same kind of questions, use the same kind of techniques. That's a good trick. Sometimes it's programming, but really it's all of these things. And it's all of those things plus more at the same time. It's really complicated and really scary. Now, some of the reports I've been talking about, I'll, I'll tweet those links out. This is one of them. This was commissioned in 2019 by the Australian Department of Education and Training. I think it was written by Newcastle University in Australia. It's called Artificial Intelligence and Emerging Technology in Schools. It was commissioned to basically be a really good literature review of what's going on with AI and provide some translational re reading for students, for teachers to understand how to relate to their students. And it covers both pillars. So it covers the pillar of AI stuff that is being used to augment teaching, as well as how to teach AI. Seriously, read this report. You can get it online. There's the URL. I cannot recommend this enough. Very, very good. It is, if you only read one thing about this topic, read this. It's also a book. It's called Future Frontiers. It's very, very good. It's a bunch of independent essays. It's actually highly readable. This book is free and available online. Uh, the report is Creative Commons. The book is free. They're both freely available for you to read, though. I highly recommend you check them out. There's a lot of other references. These are two really important ones I suggest you check out. These are a bit Australian focused, but that's, that's kind of where my research and my work in this field has come in. But I'll tweet some more and there'll be a link up on my Twitter profile for more resources. That's everything I've got for you today. Uh, thank you for watching. Find me online on Twitter and stay safe.